Full throttle first hour, and now we speak and talk and visit with Kendall Brown, Baylor guard, forward, wing, man that can do it all for Baylor. And he joins us now on Sikkim 365 Radio, Paul Craig and David Smoke. Kendall's made the decision to join the uh, NBA draft and go professional as well. Kendall, I don't think anyone's surprised with the decision. Was it a hard decision? Yeah, um, it was definitely a hard decision for me, you know, to like leave teammates and friends in the area of Waco. You know, this is my home for a long time. And uh, I just like, you know, you come all around with emotions and you have to decide to leave people. But yeah, I know this is going to help me in the long run. Kendall, just a year ago, you were you know coming to campus as a freshman and all that. Two years ago, you're in high school. What is the the rapid growth of a, of an NBA prospect like yourself? Like, is it is it a whirlwind? Does it feel like that at all, or is it does it does it maybe feel slower to you? Yeah, um, I guess like in the moment you don't realize it, but when you like take a step back and I look at the bigger picture, you know, like you come a long way as a player. And, like, uh, for me, like, I just look at that and, like, I got to be a little bit proud, you know, like, uh, to accomplish the things that I've done and stuff as a team. But, yeah, it's, like, it's kind of surreal when you think about it. What's it been like the last couple of weeks uh, just in terms of, of watching the tournament and, and you guys being done? Has, has that been hard? And, and just kind of what's that feeling like for you? Yeah, it's been hard, you know, uh, we definitely <laughs> we should be in the final four right now, but um, yeah, I mean credit to other teams, but you know, uh, kind of sad, but you can't dwell on it for too long. Got to keep moving. Kendall, uh, you've had this dream and for a long, long time, and, and anyone that grows up playing basketball would have the dream of whatever professional league is a part of whatever sport that they like: basketball, football, or baseball. Is it is it something that when did you actually first think you were good enough to play at the NBA level? Uh, really, I just I just uh, thought that like as a kid, ever since I knew what the NBA was, I was like that was my plan, like nonstop. Like I never had a plan B. So I guess like just the confidence of just believing in myself that I'm good enough to play there, and I will one day. Uh, that's just the mindset that I've had ever since a kid. What part of your game do you feel grew the most in your in your year here? I would just say like my my pace, like uh, I just I feel like so more mature as the overall player, um, not so rushed, and I just feel like I just grew a lot in that aspect, and uh, my jump shot and uh, ball handling, et cetera. Was it a quick year? or Was it a long year? Uh, it, it it did go by fast. Like, just uh, like I was talking to one of the GAs. Uh, like it just felt like we were just coming back from the Oregon game, and now it's <laughs> like we're done with the whole season. So it went by really fast. Not just done with the season; you're done with college basketball. Yeah, you're yeah, off to the NBA. Done. So yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy <laughs> how fast that happens. Yeah. Kendall, we had an analyst, I believe, that told us one time that, uh, for example, both you and Jeremy where those thought of as a possible what they call one and done. It's not that you raise your hand, and it's not that Kendall Brown got up one day and said, hey, I'm a one and done. You had to kind of make that decision, or Jeremy, or anyone. But it's kind of something that is, a, is put on certain players coming out of high school. It, does that put additional, I don't know if the word is pressure, but a, a burden in a way on you? Yeah, you, you can say that. Like, it definitely... Um we talk about like mental health and stuff with athletes. Like that's a lot of pressure, you know, uh, every day, every game, you know, you either succeed or you fail. And with the pressure of, you know, being a one and done or this and that, you know, that can like take a toll on an athlete. Um, if he like does it, if he has a bad game or whatnot, but yeah, I would say there's definitely pressure that athletes would feel. You, uh, part of the way through the year, you, they, they asked you to start shooting more threes. What does it say about you as a player that there's a lot of times they have to ask people to stop shooting as much or doing that, that you came in to do kind of maybe the little things first before the, the glory stuff? Yeah, I'll just say that it just shows like I'll let the game come to me and I'm, I'm not a player who will take a bunch of shots. Like, that's why I think 
uh, translate well in the NBA. You know, they're stars, and the stars get their shots. And I'm not a player that I'll need to come in and take a bunch of shots out of the way I can play off the ball. But uh, I feel like that helps me a lot. Can you try to describe, you mentioned the year, either went fast, obviously, as you just mentioned with Craig's question, but you just thought you were playing Oregon last week, and all of a sudden it's gone. Can you try to put into words, even though it wasn't long, your time at Baylor, being a part of that staff with Coach Drew and so many others, and what you learned being a part of that staff and being at Baylor? Yeah, being there, um, I definitely just learned, like, coming every day with the same energy, like, uh, just the same habits and just uh, instilling in me just to come and work every day. You know, nothing's given. Everything's earned. So just coming in and working every day uh, are good habits that I learned from them. Great. <laughs> what would you say, and Baylor has their own class that's coming in, the newest class that's coming in, what would you say to somebody – that is going to visit or talk to Baylor about playing basketball? Uh, someone that's going to uh, visit or talk to them, I'll just say, you know, uh, everyone there wants the best interest for you, and they're going to do everything to, uh, you know, care for you and love you. And it's not like it's God first over everything. So, you know, basketball comes second in that aspect. But, um, yeah, like everyone here loves you. The community is great. And there's a reason to come in here and work, you know, and, and get the job done. You know, I know that the you know, that North Carolina game is going to live with you guys for a, for a long time, but I did wonder this, and I haven't heard anybody say this, so I'll ask you. Uh, I think fans watching Jeremy Sohan did not realize that he could get in people's domes like he did. Did you guys know <laughs> that he could get in the other team's head like he did against North Carolina? Yeah, we've been <laughs> on that. He's just, uh, just, a, <laughs> just a dude that, you know, can get under your skin. Like, he's just like... It's just something about him, like, I don't know if it's, like, just the way he talks. And, like, it's funny, but, yeah, he definitely can. How often, Kendall, even in the mo moment of playing basketball at Baylor, how often did you or Jeremy talk, uh, and Jeremy, talk or discuss the future uh, about the possibility of turning professional at any time? Yeah, I mean, ever since, like, uh, we knew that, uh, well, we well, seen that we could, like, take it to the next level. Like, we've always had conversations and stuff about our future, you know, as kids. You know, that's this is what we want to do. We want to play at the highest level. We want to play with the best of the best to get better. So just, uh, we, we would talk a lot about it. What is it going to be to mean to you? And there's a long way to go between now and the draft. But what will it mean to you if you close your eyes for a second and you hear somebody calling your name drafted by whoever it is among the NBA on draft night, what will that moment mean to you? Um, yeah, I was going to be overwhelmed with emotions, you know. Uh, this is just a dream ever since a little kid and uh, all the work you put in and the family and friends that have sacrificed and all the coaching staff that, that have helped me and, uh, get better, you know. It's all going to come over at once and like, this is the top of the top, so I'm just going to be overwhelmed with emotion. Well, uh, I, I want to tell you this. I, I know that the season didn't end the way you guys wanted, or Baylor fans as well. I enjoyed watching you play the game. And I, I always remember what that analyst said, that sometimes uh, the burden that's put on players when because they're great coming out of high school of what people expect, that you should score 30 points a game or you should dominate. And I, I just thought you did whatever you could do, and it's always a learning process, and I think you're going to – you're going to be great. Uh, and I, I love watching you in the transition game whenever that opportunity arose as well because it was like you were a Ferrari uh, out there on the, mm -hmm. uh, on, the, on the court as well. Thank you for representing what you did for Baylor, for the staff, and good luck going forward as well. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Kendall Brown, former Baylor men's basketball player who's now entered the NBA draft. Not a surprise at all. Yesterday, John Jacobs, again, going back to the conversation with him, that uh, even I said, do you know for sure whether anyone has made their mind up about the next level? That includes Jeremy Sohan, Kendall Brown, Matthew Meyer, and others. And uh, he said, well, we're going to, you know, they have their opportunity. You could hear it that you would expect that Kendall Brown and most likely Sohan as well. Uh, and I think everyone expects Meyer as well, but that, that remains to be seen. One of the things I think with the one and, and done guys that, that Baylor can show is 
they can handle every which kind of person, whether it's a transfer that's going to stay until their eligibility is completely done. If it's a guy who's only going to be there a little while, I, you need to be able to kind of navigate both because sometimes, you know, you can be a one and done at a place and then you get never, you never get one again because, you know, it, it, it didn't work out in the NBA and people are like, well, he didn't do a good job there. So I'm not going to go there. But if Baylor can show, and I think they have that they can, you know, balance whatever kind of uh, of term of your eligibility that you're going to get and maximize it, then that's only going to help Scott Drew and the staff recruit more guys. I was going to bring this up, but it was seen because if you ever watched that series, uh, our time on ESPN Plus, uh, when uh, Jared Nunes was trying to get Kendall Brown to be more vocal as a college basketball player, as a teammate, and I was going to bring that up. I didn't. Uh, Jared was talking about it. One of the memory he, uh, that he kind of brings up the most, and that was it. He was trying to get him to say the word red, and he said, yeah, he's going to have to be much more vocal uh, on the NBA court or in the NBA uh, than he was in college. I know there were times because he was one and done or people thought of him as one and done. People put that on him as one and done. That because he didn't score 23 points a game and have nine assists and 12 rebounds, that there were some disappointments as far as people's perception or opinions. And, I, and that's, that's, that's just, uh, it's, it's unrealistic. He's a different player. Jeremy Sohan's a different player. And others, I just saw a young man from Stanford committed to, to the NBA draft. Everyone's different in what they do. But he could kill, he, Jeremy Sohan was a Swiss Army knife, right? With a lot of edge. But Kendall Brown, in certain ways, could be that way uh, as well. You, All right. You know who I see Jeremy Sohan fitting the best with? Is Greg Popovich. One, he's European, and they're, they've, been, they've been great at that over the years. And two, I mean, he, he'll do whatever you ask him to do. The Mavericks and the Spurs, when it comes to European players, yeah. uh, are uh, the two Texas franchises. Of course, I know the Rockets are there as well. Uh, have done very, very well. Boy, the Mavericks are just fire on fire and the spurs are trying to chase down the lakers for one of that last nba spots all right when we come back we'll get to the uh, chat room today i've been watching it i've gone on there a couple of different times we'll get to 